I don't know what it is about Alabama, but it sure loves the rain here. This is the first sunshine we've gotten in a long time, it seems like. And it's even still like cloudy and all the ground's wet where it rained a little bit ago. So <clears throat> taking the opportunity to wash the car. This is the second time I've washed it since I bought it. And uh, yeah, super clean. So I'm waiting on the first mod to hit the doorstep from the old interwebs. But until then, uh, I've got a little baby mod that we're gonna do to this car. First, we're gonna finish getting it washed and then I'm gonna take, where is it? Let me find this thing. It was right there. I have no clue where it's at now. I really don't know. Let me see if I can find this thing. We've got a little, I guess it's a free mod. Oh, there it is. It's a free mod, but it's only free to me. And the reason it's only free to me is because I de-bow tied the old Camaro. And then when I traded it back, I never put the bow tie back on it. <laughs> so I've got this free little bow tie emblem that is already made for the back of a Camaro. <laughs> Just like that one. So they are the same size, same everything. So what I'm gonna do is take this, get all the glue off the back of it, and we're gonna do, uh, I'm calling it a flow tie mod. I've seen other people call it that before, but basically on the ZL1, the front bow tie is actually hollow. So you can like stick your whole finger through it. There's nothing there. And they call it a flow tie because it's supposed to not block flow into the engine. So flow tie. So we're gonna do that on the back of the car and basically cut all the black out and then we're gonna take the chrome and wrap it in gloss black and then we're gonna stick it back to the car and what it'll give it is the appearance of like, it'll be the bow tie perimeter and then you'll see the blue paint in the middle of it. So I think it'll look pretty cool. Just something a little bit custom and getting rid of the chrome on the car because it's uh, besides the front flow tie, it's pretty much the only chrome that's on the car. All right, she is all cleaned up, tucked back into her hiding spot. Safe and sound and comfy. Now we get to start this flow tie mod. So it turns out removing this adhesive is as simple as just like lifting up on it. She's coming right off. Probably because it's a brand new car and it's only been on there like six months instead of six years. Yeah, so adhesive off. Next step is gonna be pop these plastic welds out and then uh, take that black piece out. So I don't plan on reusing this center insert, so I'm not too concerned about how much I damage these little plastic welds. Uh, but if this was, uh, if you're watching this video to learn like basically how to wrap or how to take this apart so that you can wrap the outside perimeter, um, well, you could probably wrap it without taking it apart, but if for some reason you want to take it apart, what I usually do is take a soldering gun and uh, push down into there and get that plastic like soft. And then on the front, you can get a pry in behind that black and start lifting up and it'll pop it out. And that way, when you're done, you can shove it back in there and then heat it back up and smear it around and it'll kind of hold it back together. That's actually what I did on my truck when I wrapped my bow tie uh, outer ring. You can see here, I pried the little circles off of the outer rings where it was plastic welded, and now you can just kind of push in the middle. You can see the insert just comes right out, and it's just left with those four little stems. So, this is what we're going to be working with. Now, all we got to do is get a Dremel and finely cut the inside perimeter of that bow tie, and then we can wrap it black. I wonder if it would look good to put the center on the flow tie in the front of this. Oh God, that's hideous. No, we're not gonna do that. This little bad boy right here caused all that damage. So we started off just pre-drilling out the holes that were already there. And then I decided to open up some more holes. It's the quickest way to remove material in my opinion. Um, the only problem I just realized is my Dremel doesn't have a cutoff disc. I went through them all, so I've got to figure out another way to cut these clean lines. Maybe I'll just have to go to the store and get a couple Dremel bits. But until then, we kind of got a holding pattern, so let's get that taken care of. 
Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but this bit on the Dremel, which is like a side drilling bit, is actually working pretty good here. Man, my GoPro will not focus for anything. It's actually working pretty good to get a straight line. The only thing we got to do is come back with a razor blade and just clean the edges up. Okay, so after tons of this, that noise, that noise definitely gets annoying. After tons of that, a little bit of time and a razor blade, bam, we have our flow tie. So now I've got to decide, do I want to wrap that or do I want to paint it? I'm not sure yet. Okay, after a long deliberation, probably about 30 or 40 seconds, I decided that I'm gonna paint it and I have got it all scuffed up. I don't know if you can see the scratches or not. Got it all scuffed up, got all the edges softened, uh, no burrs or anything sticking out. And so now we can prime it and paint it. Okay, we got the flow tie primered and we got it sanded down here. Uh, I, I primed it and then sanded it after I primed it just to remove any high spots or kind of overspray or, or like roughness that the, the primer adds to it. So now it's time for the paint. So the key to this when you're spray painting something like this is you want to do light coats. A lot of people try to get full coverage the first coat and that ends up running and adding all kinds of weirdness to it. So light coat, just get some color on it, let it dry, sand it down, and then come back with a second, maybe a third, maybe a fourth, depending on how the results are. Don't try to do it all in one coat. Okay, so the next step in the process is going to be removing the bow tie. And what I've got is some fishing line, hard to see here. I'm actually doubling it up because single fishing line, unless you get really high test, will still break. And the goal here is we just want to get it under the edge and then we want to just saw back and forth. We're just going to keep going. It's probably going to hurt your fingers after a while. Okay, we just finished and now we should be able to lift this up. I'm actually going to get the string and see if I can lift with that. Now the most important part here, you don't want to pivot it too much because what will happen is you'll lift on one side and the other side will dig into the paint. There we go. So I just kind of broke it loose both sides. There you have it. Bow tie removal. We got the emblem removed. And now all clean and prepped and ready for the flow tie. Flow tie mod is done. We've got it all painted. We've got the 3M molding tape on the back of it. Pick some of this up at the auto parts store. It's just double-sided tape, but it's made for molding on cars. I'm guessing that means it's maybe more removable. I, I don't know. Anyway, so now we just got to do placement figure out where it's gonna go and then I'm gonna use some tape just to line it up and then we'll get it set voila flow tie mod super sick I think it looks pretty dope and it's like a peek through for your factory color and it kind of has a resemblance to the front actual flow tie which is from the factory right here Right, it's a bow tie, but you can like stick your fingers in it. So there you go, guys. Flow tie mod complete. The only problem now is I've got a flow tie in the back that's black and the front is chrome. So we're going to have to do something about that. But that's going to be in another video because I'm done with this one. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you on the next mod.